All right, everyone, welcome back to another Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes video with Fat Phil, and I have an FAQ for you all today. Got a bunch of topics that we're going to get into, so let's just take a quick moment here. Let's thank the channel members so much for all their continued support. Again, if you're ever interested in joining that link for channel memberships and the Discord, both of them right here down below, I'm excessively pointing down here below. Uh, again, if you're on the council, thank you so much for continuing to put your faith in me to give you good quality content and of course to my wampa and jedi master tier members thank you guys so much for just continuing to put your faith in me and i hope that you feel that this is a good investment for you i hope you're learning from me because that's the biggest thing i can ask is that you're learning from this channel that's why i started it so let's get into some faqs the first question i was asked is how long have i been playing star wars galaxy of heroes for and um this is kind of a very loaded question um I played for a long time so i started not long after launch took a massive break and came back in like the summer of 2016 and played extensively from the summer of 2016 until like the fall of 2018 it was like september of 2018. from there i took a break i just kind of got burnt out with the game um it just it was just kind of i just kind of lost love with the game for a little bit there wasn't a lot at that time there wasn't a lot going on and I wanted more from the game, and it just wasn't there, so I decided to set it aside. And then uh, my buddy Mahir, during COVID, re-downloaded it and ruined my life by convincing me to start playing this game again. So, like, in April of 2020, started playing the game again. When I came back, I had 3 million galactic power, no GLs. My arena team was a 5-star Treya, a 5-star... Scion, a seven star Nihilus, seven star Thrawn, and a uh, three star Sith Empire Trooper. So it was brutal. Like, I had a lot of work to do um, to come back to. I had no relics, you know, no, none of the new stuff. So, starting in April of 2020 to now, January of 2024, we've gained all the relics you see, all the Galactic Legends. And now, some of this was I had a lot of those older characters. Like I didn't, I had to farm like two characters for the re resistance farm, or I had to farm like two characters for first order. Like there wasn't a lot of character shards I had to farm except the new ones. Now, Kyrotex and other stuff I was behind on. So like there was some bones that I had to my account that were very, very beneficial. But yeah, so I've been playing, you'd say probably in total, it's been over, it's probably been six years that I've played in total, probably close to six. Um, so yeah, it's definitely been a long time. Definitely a long time. Maybe maybe like five and a half. I don't know. Five and a half to six years. So, yeah. Long, a lot of a lot of blood, sweat, and tears have gone into Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. So, yeah. I get asked that a lot. Um, you know, it's a complicated question because it's not like I've just been playing straight through. But it is all on the same account. The next question I got asked, and this was in response to the guild video I posted where I was talking about how my guild was trying to decide between the speeder bike raid, uh, going after more stars going after the special missions and the comment i saw was that um and again i want to make sure this was um i quote this the right way uh and this was from old geezer gamer and he said finding 50 like-minded guild members at 10 plus million is a struggle and so what i want to counter with is that it's not finding 50 players who think exactly like me because, you know, it's not about finding 50 players who think exactly like Fat Phil. In fact, you probably couldn't find one who thinks exactly like me. Because, well, I'm very unique and Wampa is king. Um, but it's about finding 50 players or 49 other players who value that as a collective, we're going to come together and say what we think is best for everyone and work on it together. That you're working on the same goal. So it's not necessarily that we're all like-minded. Because some players wanted to do the raids, some wanted to do stars, some wanted to do special missions. But we took a vote on it, and then it's about everybody buying in that, yes, I'm going to do that. Like, I wanted to do the special missions. If the answer was the raid, I would have gone in all in on the raid. If it was get extra stars, I would have done that. You know, it's not about finding 50 people or finding 49 other people who think just like me. But finding 49 other people who are willing to sacrifice some of their own personal wants and needs for the sake of the collective whole of the guild. And that is a much easier thing to do. Because you, a lot of times, like the, the perfect balance in a guild is that I need them as much as they need me. If your guild is 
over-reliant on you, that's a bad sign because it means that you're doing more than your fair share, right? And then on the flip side, if your guild isn't reliant on you, that's a scary t you know, situation to be in because they could be looking to replace you with somebody who could be, you know, who they could rely on. So again, you know, it's, you know, you, you're not just finding 50 players that are uh, an exact clone copy of you, but find the players who are willing to set aside some of their own personal things to help the collective whole progress together at a faster rate. So when you look at it that way, I think it's very easy to find players like that in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes because everybody wants to progress faster. So yeah, you've just got to do it in the right way, which is important. The next comment that I saw that I wanted to answer that I saw was a lot of FAQ or that I felt was FAQ worthy was, um, where was it at down here? I'm scrolling through. Um, oh it, yeah, it was related to Grand Arena. That's right. So it was related to Grand Arena. And in particular, like, when do I think that they will fix? When do I think Grand Arena will get fixed? So... To understand Grand Arena and the rankings here. Whoa, whoa, sorry, hold on. I'm just like, where in the heck is Aesop Rock? Wow. Sorry, guys. I, I've never seen Aesop Rock below, like, second. I don't know if you guys would recognize that or not. But Aesop Rock is in 15th. Holy crap. Like a resounding 15th, too. Dark Helmet, man. Good for you. That is insane. Wow, yeah, Aesop Rock, man. I mean, I hope you're all right, dude. I've never seen you that low. Sorry, sorry. Uh, <laughs> all over the place there. Um, but what I'm trying to say is that, you know, it, like Grand Arena, I know they're fixing it right now. Like, there's a reason I'm in Kyber 1. It's not because I'm, I mean, I'm a decent player. But really, my roster size combined with my skill push me into Kyber 1 with this new system where they're allowing more players into Kyber 1. They're not keeping it in this small subset. So I think they are going to fix all of the different areas. Carbonite down to, you know, Carbonite all the way up to, um, you know, Kyber 1. But the thing is, like, let's, I'm just going to click on somebody random and I hope I can find, like, someone random in here who, like, really shouldn't be there um yeah that's an account that belongs there so every once in a while you can find an account that you're like yeah you know maybe maybe you don't belong in carbonite because there are they are here trust me they are here let's try carbonite one let's see if i can find someone this guy's got like this is not a carbonite account 4.8 million that's not a carbonite account um that's, yeah, that's a little bit better. I'm looking to see if I can find another one, guys. Maybe I'll find one other one. I know there's some really big accounts in Carbonite. Uh, 2.3, yeah, you basically belong there. Come on, can I not find it? That's gonna, oh, you know what? I know where I can find one. I know where I can find one. <laughs> I, I forgot. So, yes, what I'm saying is, yes, I do think they are gonna fix Grand Arena, but I think it's gonna take them some time. Because they first need to fix the top level. So let me show you. This guy here, Jonathan. He's in Carbonite 5 with 11.7 million. Uh, this dude's in my fleet shard and is one of the most annoying people on planet Earth. He has, like, just go to hit When you look at his ships, and in particular, you look at, like, his fleets. Like, Malgus Relic 9, um, Tie Dagger Relic 8, Sith Assassin Relic 9. Mark Interceptor, Relic 8, B-28, Relic 8. Like, this dude, yeah. Relic 7 on Clone Sarge. You know, it, it, it was crazy, right? Like, his Jedi, where's his Jedi Consular at? I feel like he, yeah, Jedi Consular, Relic 8, Jedi Consular. Like, what are we doing in life? So, anyway. the They need to fix Kyber 1 first. Right, and I'll come back to the examples of this dude here sitting in Carbonite 5 where, like, he has no business being there. So, you know, sorry, I, I, know, I, really, I really should have started there, guys. I apologize. I'm not editing that out. So, the with Kyber, I think what they needed to do first is fix the top end. You've got to fix Kyber first because what's going to happen is that whenever you start moving people around, there's wins and there's losses. And those wins and losses compress people down, right? When you, Whenever somebody wins, there's an opposite reaction that somebody lost. 
So like with your skill rating, it's it's a net zero impact, except that like I go up 40 and you go down 40, right? So like there's this, you know, really like opposite effect to each you like you don't stay the same right they like if you lose your skill rating doesn't stay the same it drops you know and so they have to fix the top end first so then hey we've got everybody in kyber one now we can get everybody we want into kyber two and then we've got kyber two fixed then kyber three and each of these will get faster and faster and faster because like right now in kyber two there are still accounts who really belong in kyber one so as that account wins, they're going to push somebody down into Kyber 2. And let's say that person also belongs in Kyber 1. Well, they just got shoved down. So now they've got to work their way up. So it is going to take a while to fix K1. And then from there, every single one after that gets faster. And unfortunately, I think Carbonite will be the last one to really feel any of that impact because everybody else is getting kind of squished down and then squished up and squished down and squished up as each of these different leagues gets fixed. But the second part of Grand Arena and the second part of the change is what about those guys like Jonathan who just don't play, right? How do we fix them? What do we do there? And this is where I think we need to be a little bit more on that side of understanding the real impact and I'm trying to think of the word to use here, um, understanding the real like issue at hand. If you're sitting in Carbonite 5, right? If you're sitting in Carbonite as somebody who should be at my level, when you look at the rewards, I mean, Carbonite 5, you're getting 55 crystals a day. You get 70 for a win, 30 for a defeat. So, the, and then you get 100 at the end of the at the end of your season. Now, your weekly event rewards, these stay the same through every single grouping, right? So the only thing that changes between the groupings is your daily rewards change based on your division and your win rewards change based on your division, right? So your win rewards and your dailies and then, of course, the, the championship rewards at the end of the season, they all change. And then the only other thing that changes is um, your loss rewards change based on your league. So Kyber um erodium chromium bronzium and then finally carbonite so you look if you sit in carbonite one and you win and you go nine and oh i'm gonna do better going oh and nine in kyber i'm literally gonna do better in kyber going uh, going oh and nine because i'm getting more crystals every day my defeat crystals are worth more than your win crystals so you could say, oh, well, no, I'm going to get, you know, 1,500, what, 2,250 crystals here, right? 2,250 crystals here. Okay. Well, you only got, you know, 900 crystals from winning. I got, what, 1,800 crystals from losing. And then I got an extra 300 here. I'm going to get an extra 2,000 down here compared to your 200. So I win. On top of that, my daily crystals are way better. So them sitting in those lower divisions isn't actually helping them, right? It, I know it seems frustrating to you, but in the grand scheme of it, it's not actually, I, I think like the, the fix is not to just let them sit in Kyber and go 0 oh, and 9, because then they're getting resources that they really don't earn. So I think what Capital Games has to figure out is how do we ensure that those players aren't getting rewards they don't deserve, but also aren't causing players who really are just belonging in Kyber, getting into Carbonite, you know, that like, how can we ensure that they're not causing bad problems there? And that's where I think they're going to have to figure out some form of matchmaking of, hey, Phil's in Kyber 1, he's only going to face accounts of his size in Kyber 1. Maybe they do something like that, where they try and find the closest accounts to your GP. So that way, all those idiots in Carbonite 5 who have, you know, 15 million GP can fight each other. And that way, those players who are just getting in for their first Grand Arena can actually have a chance against somebody and not see Leia, Jabba, Lord Vader, Kenobi, Rey, Jedi Master Luke, Sith Eternal, and Kylo on the front wall and just cry. So I know that was a long-winded GAC, but I feel like that's a good explanation of, you know, the two problems there, right? And then the last thing to cover here with the, you know, with an FAQ... 
um, came into play where some, you know, people were saying I that, like, do I feel that I lose touch with the earlier parts of the game because of my galactic power? And I, I think I would admit that I can be out of touch at times, but I think I have a pretty, I'd say the one understanding that I think I have that maybe you discount is that there's far more rewards available to you now. There's far more avenues for you to get gear now. That when a lot of us were first starting this game, there wasn't these easy farming paths to get something really good. That it took you so much longer to get places that you would have to use these strange teams. Like when I was playing, I can remember using a, I mean, I, I like my team was in, in Galactic War for the longest time. And I mean, this is long before I figured out like really good meta stuff. But for a while, I was using like Captain Phasma, um, Princess Leia. Where is she at? Princess Leia. I would use fives. Um, Cad Bane and like, I don't know, it was somebody else garbage. Like it was just this strange team because I didn't really have any other characters at the time. And I didn't know what I was doing. But, like, there wasn't these really good farming guides like there are now. It was just kind of like this mumbo-jumbo. It was a really kind of interesting time to play Galaxy of Heroes. But I can remember you just sitting around waiting for raid rewards to drop and hoping there was something. Like, it is a lot... There, In a way, what I think I've lost touch with at times is maybe how long certain things could take to get or... And that's why I try to ask you guys, like, how many... I asked a lot of my channel members how many Zetas they had so I could figure out how many I could recommend for the farming guide. And when I look at that farming guide, it's why I scaled it back this year was that I recognized that going as in depth as I was, wasn't really helping that it's better off to try and, you know, show you guys a bit more of all of these pieces rather than going, you know, years and years and years into the future. Um, so yeah, like I would fully admit that I think in some ways we can lose a little bit of touch, but that's why it's nice for me to do roster reviews is that I can look at those accounts in the early parts of the game and see what players have. And the more that I've done that, the more that I see that this farming guide that I have makes more and more sense to me. Because it's not insane to ask people to do these things when I see what their accounts look like, right? And I mean, I think the, the Lightspeed Bundles have done a fantastic job, I feel, of giving players some relics that, not that necessarily, you know, I don't want to use the term like, oh, you didn't earn it, right? But you, you didn't earn it, but giving you relics that really are going to allow you to build some good, solid teams between Ray, Kylo, Starkiller, Beskar, Mermando, the Phoenix bundle was really good, some of those Rebel bundles. Like, I think they did a really good job of picking factions that are going to help you progress more and more in the game. So, yes, like I've definitely lost a little bit of touch just because like I, I don't have the time for a free-to-play account. I fully admit that, guys. I do not have time for a free-to-play account. But... Or, I, I can't believe I call it free to play account. That always pisses me off. I don't have time for a new account. It's just not something I have the time to do. Um, and that's why I try to do the roster reviews for you guys to give you the advice that I can. So again, like and subscribe, comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. I love all you. May the force be with you. And I will see you guys in the next video. Cheers.